Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will complete the following keys eager loading, including related data using the include method of the entity framework. Additionally, we will implement best practices with the model builder class. Finally, we will add a few if checks in the controllers to complete the controllers lessons. Let's run Swagger once again to send the GET request. If we run it, instead of the GUID, we are getting back null values. And it doesn't look correct. To fix this, in the storage repository class, we need to add the include method. In entity framework, the include method is used to specify related data to be included in query results. It is part of the eager loading feature which allows you to load related entities along with the main entity in a single query, thereby reducing the number of database queries. So here, in the getAllAsyncAction method, just after the planets, we need to add the include method, and then to access foreign keys referencing the solar system and water entities. When querying for a planet, we will retrieve the necessary data. By using this approach, we are telling Entity Framework to load the related solar system and water entities, along with the planet entity in a single query, which can also help avoid additional database round trips. For the getBuyIdAsyncAction method, we need to implement the same approach. We can copy this entire section of include methods with lambda expressions and paste it into the getBuyIdAsync method. This part has been completed. Next step, we need to create the water DTO, which was omitted during the previous lesson. So let's fix this step as well. As always, choose any DTO you like, press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V and rename the file to water DTO. Copy the file name and paste it as the class name. Next, copy all properties from the water model and paste the copied content into the water DTO. Now let's open the planet DTO. And for both solar system and water, we need to add the suffix DTO. And the final step is to create a mapping. In the mapping profiles, we only need to duplicate the latest record and map water to the newly created water DTO. With that, we have implemented eager loading with included related data. And now, if we go to Swagger and run the GET request again, we no longer see null values but the actual data retrieved from the solar system and water tables. So we have included all the data related to the Earth planet, the solar system along with water. Now we can clearly see the solar system to which this planet belongs and the state of its water. And next, let's open the DB context. I will implement only one example for the first item. We need an if check to verify the correctness of the ID using GUID try parse. Let's copy the very first GUID. If it's false, we throw an exception with invalid operation exception and a message stating that the GUID is invalid. Otherwise, we will reflect the water ID variable and its value outside the method. Thus, we can use it as a value for the ID, making the ID now refer to the water ID. And one more thing here, we can create an external variable or even two variables. The first one will be of type private, static, read-only, and it will parse the GID which we need to copy and paste. The second variable will also be private, and it will hold the value of the image. Both variables refer to the liquid instance, thus the variable names. The if check will now take the liquid water GUID variable as a string, and the image will now refer to the variable liquid water image. As I mentioned, I will implement it only for demonstration purposes for a single instance, but you can implement it for every item if you deem it necessary. Using this approach with read-only static GUID, ensures that it's a constant value throughout the lifetime of the application, so it won't be changed and will remain consistent. The use of GUID try parts with a validation check ensures that the hard-coded GUID is correctly formatted, and it's called defensive programming practice to catch potential errors during development. Also, by defining the constants at the beginning of the class, we have created a clear separation between the constants and the rest of the code to improve readability and maintainability. 
the data seeding process using the has data method is correctly implemented and follows a consistent pattern for seeding both water and solar system entities. As I mentioned, this approach reflects good practices, making it more readable, maintainable and secure. And one more fix. Let's open the planet controller. The getByID method contains the if check. We can implement it within the controller for other action methods. Let's copy it and paste it for the update by ID method. I will complete similar steps later for all controllers and their action methods. And if required, you can also do the same and verify your code and mine on GitHub. And in the next lesson, we will discuss iValidatable object. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!